Hey there, for anyone that bought a Sony HMD recently, you must be pretty pretty pissed off as I am about the comfort level. It's, a, it's just an amazing device. It's pretty awesome that Sony brought it out so quickly after we even saw it last year, or the start of this year even. Now this is the as it comes. And the problem everyone has is basically you want to get your eyes in as close as possible, or you have to get your eyes in as close as possible to get it in focus. And these are the options you have to adjust it. You've basically got a top strap, you've got a back strap, it's got flexibility into it, and then you these two slide in and out. So you'd think the thing really isn't that heavy. What you do is just slip that on and just Flip it around, play around with it and get it just right. Now you first put it on there and you think, wow, it's great. But as soon as you actually turn the thing on, you realize it's not perfectly in focus. So you think, oh, I can play around with it a little bit. And you have uh, three of these. You have two different axes these can click onto. So that gives you all six different options. You think, well, that would be easily enough. You also have this little focus adjuster on the bottom so you can have three different positions but what tends to happen is you get it just about right and it's just there's a lot of pressure on your forehead or this guy kind of hurts your head a little bit and so you have to keep playing with it and you have to keep playing with it and maybe sometimes you'll watch a movie and after an hour it, it hurts and you're kind of like well I actually love this device the 3D is so crisp and so clear it's like nothing I've seen before it's immersive, the gameplay is fantastic. The track IR, it's moving your head around and the vision follows you, it's the most immersive thing. But it's just uncomfortable. Which creates a big problem because we all like to be comfortable at home and we spend hard earned cash on a good gadget. Makes you wonder when we've got things like this. Any biker would know. Easy on, super comfortable. Driven for six hours and certainly not your head or your neck that's hurting, it's all the rest of your body. In the cold, in the heat, whichever, they've kind of mastered this. And it's like, why can't they just like chop this off, take the visor off, take the mechanism off, take all the ducting off, take off the hard shell. And you'd easily be able to mount that, a bit of plastic on there. But I guess they, uh, they couldn't really figure it out. Or maybe they would just rush in or when they figured it'd be enough. So a lot of guys in the forum have been coming up with things and I came up with this monstrosity. It's in beta at the moment, I just put it together. But it seems to work really well. Uh, it's basically it started off as a helmet from Walmart, $20, that's like 12 quid in UK. And uh, the thing fell apart before I even got it to the counter. I didn't really care because it, was, uh, it wasn't really the aesthetics I wanted. I just pulled all the bits of plastic off it. And you, what you're left with is a really good thing for kind of prototyping and just chopping around and adjusting. And I just tie wrapped the guy to the HMD, to the helmet foam. And it's really steady and it doesn't like, it's not, I have to adjust it every time I put it on. It's really fixed. And the way I did this, the problem I had is uh, this inside this helmet, I don't know if this can see in this crappy light, it's got these Velcro little comfy pads stuck all inside it all over, which is really good because you can move it around you know, and play with it as you, as you were. Now the, the hard thing to get in the helmet is there's actually a switch where the pad connects and this has to be pushed back for the link thing to activate. So you have to get something behind that or you have to use a rubber band just to trick it to say that your head's, if, you, if your head's not touching that because you've not got the pad installed there, you need to use a rubber band to pull it back. But what I did is I used uh, I think it started off as a chopstick or something. <laughs> a little bit of wood I line around, and I just chopped it up and I carved the ends off and I made it click into there. And that means I could use a just a normal tie wrap around there to take all the weight of the device on the front. So all I've done is I cut away the helmet in here, and I've cut a slot in here, but I've left a flap in the front here. And what that means is it retains that switch, it pushes it forward, and it also allows me if I want, because I've left the, I've not cut away the whole front here, I've left basically just a hole where I could tie it, and I've left the rest of the material there. 
And what I've been able to do then is when I've been fine tuning this to get the focus just right in my head, I've created a lot of wedges out of some material I've chopped out of here. And I've just pushed them in there and, and just fettled it a little bit. The tolerance is very fine just to get the focus right. So I've got that just perfect. One thing you have to remember with this guy is that now you've got the the switch is depressed all the time. Like you don't just leave, go to bed and leave this on because it might just not like a burn out. It's going to really use up your L. So what I've ended up with here is I've got my stick in there. I've got a tie wrap on that, and that takes all the weight, and it's pretty firm. And I've got two tie wraps on the side, which I put on after I calibrated everything. I just locked it in place with those guys. And I could presume I could cut that tie wrap off now and these guys hold it in place, but it may move around a bit more. On the nose piece, I got rid of the nose and I stuck a little motorcycle ear plug in there. Because they're really good material for conforming to shape. And at the moment, it just my nose just kind of rests on it a little bit. It doesn't compress it or anything, so it's quite comfortable. I've left the headphones in. I know some people have customized these. They've chopped these out and put some better ones in, but I'm no audio file, so I don't really know what would be better headphones. Good thing about this helmet, this was the, uh, I think it's the Schwinn from Walmart, as I say it was $20. It's got the, uh, it's got a little twist on the back. So the diameter of the head on that is, is pretty large. You can just throw it on, pull it out. You can just then put the finger on, hold it to your face. And then on that. So I'll just hold it to my face. I've got Tron on here in 3D, looks pretty good. So I just, there I go. And that's kind of like perfect. It's super comfortable. It's I don't feel like any pressure on my head. I just put my fingers through and it's just like super comfortable. And I don't know if the main thing is because of the center of gravity is just a lot less to the forward. It's more spread out. And because this guy is designed for crash damage to save you nogging when you have a crash in the street, it's sometimes two inches thick here, so it's like 50 mil thick. So we can take away a lot of that, but I'm going to take it away on the front, so just keep the weight on the back, and then maybe I'll even add a bit of ballast on the back just to see if it, you know, just for a long term. I don't know if I've got something to Let's try, this. try and choose a center point somewhere. See, the CG is not really, it's still forward. So I guess if we trim a lot of this off, which there's a lot to come off there, it's got two inches in places, and it may bring it up a little bit, and then maybe put a little bit of weight on the back or something, just get it perfectly centered. And we'll see if we might get it perfect. Then maybe a little bit of Velcro, Velcro, a little bel uh, velvet film or something, something really dense, just covered around the outsides and maybe a bit, I don't know. The blinkers are a bit crappy, they fall off every time you use them. We might have a perfected device then. Then you'll look like an idiot, but what do you care what you look like when you're looking, watching a 3D movie with Kate Beckinsale in? You really care what she looks like, not what you look like wearing a stupid helmet.